Hi everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loan Designs. And in the previous video, part one of two, I showed you how I took these little piles of frit shown here in this picture and fused them into small little discs or wafers that I could then form into flowers. In this video, I'll be sharing how I actually do the forming using a variety of molds and even some chalk. I won't be sharing how I add the stems, and it's it's not that I won't share how to do that. I just don't have it done yet uh, to add to this video. And I know some folks were anxious to see part two, so let's go ahead and show how I turn these into flowers. I thought I would take a moment to show these after they were out of the kiln and a little comparison of you know what they were before when I filled the ring well, I didn't fill it but when I put placed the frit in the ring and removed it so really as I expected the largest one spread the most uh, medium is very similar and then the smaller one just you know volume wise didn't spread as much this one maybe a little bit more but as you can see these are the pieces after flattening, I may have been able to add more weight or more time and gotten them to spread more. Uh, but these are going to work fine for what I'm going to do in the next step. And that is place them over some either chalk or molds or both. I'll be uh, adding to this video hopefully by this weekend. So by the time you're watching this, all of these pieces should be strung together. Uh, but I just wanted to take a quick moment uh, this morning to go through these because a couple people had asked just how much did they spread from the original the wrong ring, from the original uh, size that they were when they went into the kiln. So let's see if I can kind of center that to give you a better idea. So yeah, I'm again, I'm sure I could have maybe pressed longer or hotter. These are a nice thickness. They're not super thin. And I don't want them too delicate because otherwise they're going to probably break when I put them on the molds. But I'll grab my molds and show you what I'm talking about. So these are examples of some of the cone forming, uh, cone former molds. These are all from CPI. Uh, the smallest one I have here is the GM57. I believe I got this uh, when I was doing the irises. It was either this one or this one. This one might be the one that I used for roses. Uh, this one is the GM50. That's kind of the medium one. Or this might be considered large. I can't remember. This could be the extra large or large. This one is the GM139. Uh, so hopefully you can see that. Now, this one might be a little too big for the pieces I have here. I'm really thinking more maybe between the, the smaller one on something like this, or this one maybe for our, the larger pieces here. And all I would do is kind of center these. I'll clean them up, of course. But I would center them over this and then let them fold down onto that. I've done it with and without thin fire. Um, these, I may just use thin fire just because sometimes uh, with the frit, it, the leaded frit, it does tend to stick. Although we're not going to a super high temperature here either on a drape. So those are some examples of the molds. I haven't again decided quite yet which ones I'm gonna use, but I also use in forming flowers chalk. I get it open. Here's some that I've used already. You can see I've I've uh, notched the center out of this one. I believe I had set something over it and wanted it to drape uh, kind of into that. You can also flatten the bottoms. You know, these are just, this is a perfect time of year to start finding these too, because these, I just got it, I believe it was Dollar Tree. So, you know, a dollar for six pieces, pretty good deal. And you can use them a couple different ways. You could flatten the top edge and set it down. That's not gonna sit right now because it's not flat. Let's see if I can get it to. try it on the cement floor here to smooth it down. Probably not going to get it to stay. There we go. So you can kind of see you could do that on the top or the bottom depending on how you wanted your flower to drape. Um, for something like this I would probably go with like the smaller medium to small pieces. Um, but as you can see if I use a small one 
and I probably would smooth that down just a little bit just so that it would sit level you know I can place it on there and and then you can kind of see how that would drape over the chalk um, you could also again use if you wanted this fuller part below it and do this there's also some ways of using little small molds that you would make with cast a lot uh, let me see if I have one of those I'll go grab one here are some examples of molds I've done with Castellot uh, using, I believe, this one I may have done with just a small silicone, like a pinch bowl. Uh, these, I used a silicone, I think it was a muffin or cupcake mold. Um, but I've also used these to do like centers um, or drape flowers over because you, you will pick up a little bit of design there. And I also wanted to show, people ask, hey, can you use the chalk again? Uh, sometimes I do. It depends on the method I'm doing. Like here is how some of my chalk will look when it comes out of the kiln. Uh, the other thing I'll, you'll notice if you lift one, I can, obviously can't show that on camera without getting my scale, but typically they feel a little bit lighter because I think you're just burning away some of it. Um, but they, if I were going to use this just under, say, some adjustable mold or maybe some fiber blanket, absolutely, I would use them again. If I were draping over them, I wouldn't use a cracked piece to drape over just because it would probably pick that up. Um, but these are still, I don't toss them out at this point. They're still somewhat usable. Here's one that still looks pretty good uh, on one side. You can see the other side is cracked. So maybe in a case like this, I might set it down and put something over it. But, you know, again, they're only a dollar for six of them. So they're pretty cost effective. But here's a, you know, if I were going to use something like this as my center, I can see that this probably is going to drape down, maybe not, but it may touch my shelf. I would probably just set this up on like a one inch or even just a half inch post and let this fold down over it. There's no guarantee that it won't stick in there. Um, I don't use any zip on my cast a lot, just FYI. I know some people may, some people don't, um, but I... I, it usually doesn't stick and what I at a draping or a slumping temperature I guess if you're going to use them hotter than that maybe um, but yeah if if it did get stuck in there the nice thing about the castellot stuff just soak it in some hot water it'll start to crumble and dissolve and then you can pull it out of your glass without breaking it so those are a few options I thought I would share uh, next part of this video is I'll actually be setting these up for the firing and show you what I end up using and how they look when they come out. All right, now we are at the step where we are going to slump slash drape these. Most of them are gonna be drapes. Uh, this mold back here is more of a slump. Uh, got some waviness going to it. But I've set up six different uh, things that I'm gonna slump on so that I can kind of share uh, some different ways that I do that. So these two are both comb former molds. I think I shared in the last clip uh, that they are by CPI, Creative Paradise. This one I believe is like the medium. And I'm gonna have to go back and double check because I'm not seeing the stamp on the bottom of that, but it's a comb former. This might even be considered the large and then the other one is the extra large. This piece is a piece I formed using Castellot and a little muffin mold. Over here, I have a piece of regular sidewalk chalk that I have uh, pressed on to kind of scraped away so that it would be more flat on top. Then I have a piece of egg chalk. That one is also, I've, I've flattened the bottom. I've taken a piece of sandpaper to the seams so that I don't get any really pronounced lines in it. And so that will sit there. For my smaller pieces, will go on the chalk. My medium-sized pieces are gonna go between these two and my larger ones I'm gonna try on the cone former. And then once they're draped, the next step I'll be looking at connecting them to possibly some green cane that I have pulled. So here is my first piece that I'm gonna put over a piece of chalk. I kind of figured out which side I like the best that I wanna show is the inside of the flower and that's gonna be this one. So I'm gonna very carefully set that one on my egg chalk. I do have a piece of one millimeter fiber down on my shelf just in case any of them fall off or break during slumping or draping. And I'll sh make sure that these are all straight. A little hard to do on camera sometimes once I step away, put the camera away, then I can come back through and check everything. 
Here is one that had the blues. It's also a small one. I'm going to put that on this piece of chalk. And trust me, I have gotten things all set up before and then just bumped one and knocked several down. That usually happens with the small pieces of regular chalk. Uh, hopefully not these. Here's one that had the uh, deep, let's see, ocean deep and the pink, I believe was blossom, but I'll double check that. So I'm gonna put this one as a medium. And I think I wanna put this one on here. So I'm actually gonna have my side up that I like the best, which has less of the dark. And what I hope will happen here is these edges will kind of slump down into the grooves there. I'm trying to center it somewhat. Again, I'll come back through and check that. And my other medium piece is a blue and it has that little bit of dichro in the center. So I think I will go ahead and put that one on here. And that's the Castellot mold. Just making sure that wherever my molds are that I don't have a chance of glass uh, touching it as it drapes over. And I also have these guys here, the small ones, just in case they fall over. Just put that one there. And then my two largest pieces. Here's another one with the ocean deep and the pink. Had a little bit of dichro in the center. I'm gonna put that on one of my cones. And both of these are treated, by the way. This one has just been fired um, at least once since I treated it, but it should still be good. And the other one is just one that I coated that I haven't used yet. So same thing, I'm gonna balance that on there. And then my other large one was this one where I had that piece that was white. So I want that on the inside of my flower and I will center that one back here. So I'll post the schedule I use. Um, I typically kind of have a go-to that I use for draping flower pieces. And I'll put that on a slide toward the end here with my other firing schedules. But I'm going to fire the kiln up as soon as I make sure everything is centered. And the next step, we'll see these after they are shaped. I thought I would show some of what I have available on hand for stems that I'll use later uh, once those flowers are shaped, provided they all turn out. I have picked a variety of cane that I pulled specifically for stems. So as you can see, as I pulled them, I just kind of waved them a little bit. When I get ready to epoxy these to a base, I'll cut one end so that it's flat. Sometimes the other end I leave pinched like that because it makes them easier to just press down into some foam. Uh, but I have a variety. Some of them are smaller since some of my flowers are smaller. Some of them are a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. This was just scrap green that I also added some aventurine green to when I did a vitrograph pull. And again, just uh, pulled them to look like flower stems or I've got a batch that's more brownish black that I figured would be like branches. And I do have another video, I'll try to link to that here, uh, where I did the video on uh, creating flower stems. But these are the stems that I'm gonna use. The other thing I wanted to share, some folks asked about in part one, was the cookie cutters, the rings that I had. And I just have this set here that are a set of circles. I honestly don't recall where I bought them because it's been quite a while. I think I may have purchased them at a little gift shop, but that's what I have inside. And the link I posted at the end of, uh, just in the last couple days on part one in the comments was a link to Bed Bath & Beyond. They have a very similar set. In fact, it looks like it could be the same thing. They don't show the packaging, uh, but it is a set of concentric rings or just stainless steel cookie cutters. And I imagine if you wanted to, you could try spraying them with zip and using them as little small formers but they are in the kiln for firing, but they are not that heavy. So chances are they're gonna uh, spar and, and may not uh, work really well. I'm just using them to hold the frit in place and then lifting it. So that's the one thing I wanted to show in addition, as well as a second thing, uh, the molds that I had mentioned, if you haven't picked up one of these books, uh, Creative Paradise has two of them now. I believe this is the later edition from, I think it's 2018. And in the back, there is a section on their different flower making molds. So this is where uh, you can look and see all the different shapes that they have for forming molds. I have a few of these. Uh, I love the iris set, um, but one of them, the little small comb former that I was calling small is actually their medium. That's the GM57. Uh, the two that I have in the kiln right now are the large. So that must be this one here. 
sorry for the light reflection. That is the GM50 Large Cone Former. And then I also have this ripple drape in there, and that's what one of those medium-sized pieces are sitting on. So that's a GM48. So those are the molds that I have in there today. And the next step that I'll be showing on video will be when the shaped pieces come out of the kiln. And then I can kind of share how I will be putting them together with the stems. So anyway, more to come. Okay, we're gonna open the kiln and see what they look like. It's still a little warmer than I'd like to open it, but I know this kiln cools really slow. I'll probably prop the lid. <laughs> These are small, thin pieces. I think they'll be fine. Next step is let's see how easily they come out of their molds or off of their molds. Start with this guy that was on the chalk. Okay, that one popped right off. This one on the Castellot mold, it feels like it might be a little stuck, so we'll be gentle with that one. I really like how that one turned out. Here's one. Yeah, this one might be a little stuck. Some of these I may have to turn upside down in the freezer because they did get a little snug. And this one should just lift off. That's really cute, too. So I'm going to step away from the camera, turn these upside down, see if they release. I may put them in the freezer. The Castellot one I'm not too worried about because worst case I'll just add some hot water to crumble that up. But next I'll show you what they look like out of the kiln. So here are the two that are stuck on the mold and as I look at them closer, they're pretty snug on there. I don't think the freezer method is going to work. So what I'll be doing with these is actually turning these molds upside down on posts. And since these are fairly small pieces, it'll be pretty easy to get some posts under there. And just barely above my kiln shelf, I'll heat that up. I'll start with about 1100 and see if they release. Um, I've had good luck with that in the past, but I don't wanna try to force them off of here because they will break. You can see they're, they're on there and the folds are tight. So you can see I probably should have went with my gut and done the thin fire. I didn't, um, but I do think these are going to be really cool when they are popped off of here. So hopefully they make it and don't break. Here are the ones that came out nice. This was on that ripple mold. It was a CPI GM 48. So that one is ready to plop a little stem on. I might even make a small little stamen for it. This one I really like. Sits pretty well just on its own. This one was over the piece of uh, chalk. This was over the, let me think. This one was over the egg chalk, I do believe. And this one was over, yes, this one was over the sidewalk chalk. I know I could go back and look at my pictures, but just trying to remember, and I can tell by the shape here. So this was over the sidewalk chalk, really kind of cool. And this was over the egg chalk. This one was just on a ripple mold. And this one with the castellot seemed pretty stuck. So I did stick it in some warm water and I'll be able to start chipping away at that mold uh, just to get it out of there. I'm not gonna do anything drastic with it right away since it just came out of the uh, kiln, but it'll pop out of there. I'll get the mold out. I'll probably have to sacrifice the mold, but that's okay. Uh, it wasn't much to make that. So I've got four that are ready to stem and I had shown the cane stems that I have, and I'll, I'll get some pictures of those, and I may do a video later on of that process, uh, but I don't know how quickly I'm going to get to that. So these two, I am going to put upside down on kiln stilts, and I will show that before the end of this video. So I'll probably be taking care of that uh, tonight or tomorrow. And by the time this video is put together, they hopefully will be off the molds and survived. 
So I was just about to walk away and I picked this piece up and kind of squished it around in the water and I could feel that there was some movement between the mold and the glass so I just gave it a slight twist and it did pop right out of there. So I patted that dry as I could. I just wanted to see if I could zoom in. There, it didn't really pick up a lot of texture. You can see a little bit of it in there but overall I really like that shape. So. I have four out of my six that are ready to stem and then these two that I'm gonna to have to heat up in the kiln uh, and I'll show that next once they've released. Here's how I'm gonna set these up so that these will drop I did have the post standing up, but it actually made the mold a little too high. So I've carefully placed my blocks. I'll turn it upside down. As you hopefully can see, there's not a ton of space for it to drop, so you shouldn't risk any breakage. I wanna turn it. And then my other one needs to fit in here too, to where the piece would pop out onto the paper. If I can switch hands here. So here's the other one that's a little bit stuck. Due to the space in my kiln, I may just slant it like that. You can see that that should still be okay as it drops. So here we go. We're gonna heat this up to about 1100 and see if that does the trick. I'll have hot gloves ready to pull the molds when I see that they're loosening. And I will be uh, taking a peek in here at this every now and then. I've got a pair of graphite tip tongs that are, I think they're made for the bracelet mandrel, but I think that should work in trying to lift this a little bit to see if the glass is moving, if I can't see it down in there. So next step hopefully will be as they're released. Hi everyone, thought I would pop in here for a quick voiceover at the end of the video. I was not able to get a video clip during this process of moving the molds away from the glass once it released. I had to work quickly. It was hot, as you can imagine. I did shut the kiln off as I once I lifted the lid just for safety reasons. I didn't want to touch any elements. And I, I did use the tongs just to lift them a little bit to see if they had released. I saw that they had. So then I just took my hot gloves, I, I reached in, I moved them over. It took me a couple tries to get them moved. So the one thing I would recommend before you turn your kiln on to do something like this is to make sure you have enough room to move those molds off to the side once they've released. You don't want to have them leaning on your mold or leave your, leave your glass in there heating for too long just because you don't want to lose the shape of what you have there. But this worked. I was happy it worked. I, I wanted to check it at 1100 and as soon as it had hit 1100 I didn't even need to hold. They did release. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching. I'll try to get a video soon, hopefully, on adding the stems to the flowers. But here is a final shot of the flowers once they were off the molds.